Hey there, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you like it, of course, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to look at trends, pullbacks, and a couple of big breakouts in the works. We've got an uptrend in Google leading the communication services sector, but Facebook is really lagging. Then we're going to look at energy and finance. They're in the midst of these moonshots. We'll look at the leading stocks. And then we'll look at technology because it's quite a mixed sector right now. Software weighing a little bit, but we're seeing some perking up in the two electronic payment stocks. So we are going to start off with Google, and I'm going to show you the indicators on this chart that I'm using. I don't use very many indicators because a lot of indicators are redundant. And if you're using, say, too many trend indicators, then you're going to get analysis paralysis. If you're using too many mean reversion indicators, you're going to get the same thing. So what I do is I've got basically two trend indicators plus the price chart, of course, and I've got one mean reversion indicator plus the price chart. And basically, everything you need is on the price chart. We really don't even need indicators. And if you think about it, indicators are derived from price. So how much value do they really add? Well, the value with indicators is you can build strategies around indicators and backtest them. In other words, you can see how a stock performs when it crosses above and below the 200-day you can quantify how a stock performed when RSI moved above 70. Did it pull back or did it continue trending higher and so on? So for the indicators, the trend indicator is the full stochastic, and I've got it at 125.5. So that's basically 125-day stochastic smoothed with a five-day moving average. And then percent D is just one, which means it's hidden. That's a moving average of percent K. And I don't want that moving average because I'm not looking for signals like that. And so for this indicator, basically, when you have a move above 60, that means you're clearly in the upper half of that 125-day range, which is what this is covering. It's around six months, and that's an uptrend. And this is similar to the Stoke Close indicator on the Trend Investor Pro indicator edge plugin on stock charts ACP. But that only uses closing prices, whereas the normal stochastic oscillator uses the intraday high and low in its calculation. But it's pretty similar here. But you can see we've been in an uptrend since early May. We had a little dip below 60, but a downturn doesn't start unless you cross below 40. So there's an uptrend. We've been above the 200-day moving average as well since May. That's an uptrend. And you can see prices are making higher highs and higher lows. That's an uptrend. So what do we use for mean reversion? And mean reversion is to identify a pullback within that bigger uptrend. Because pullbacks are opportunities to partake in that uptrend. So I'm using RSI. And when it dips into that 30 to 50 zone, and here it got to the 40 to 50 zone. And then you can see we got a bounce. Here we went a little deeper, and sometimes that happens. And then we finally got a bounce. Here we had a very shallow dip and a bounce. Here we had an extended dip and then a bounce. So when you get RSI into that oversold zone, then you pay attention to the price chart looking for some sort of upward catalyst. So you can see here we had a pretty deep pullback to the 200-day. And, you know, if you were looking at this, you would say, oh, my God, we broke short-term support. Well, you know, you're still in an uptrend. The two trend indicators are bullish. You just hit a new high there. So I would ignore short-term support break. And there you can see you got that little breakout. And then we had this correction. And there you can see we got the breakout after the correction. So now it looks like we're in some sort of pullback mode because we've had this surge to new highs. We're up near. We're holding this gap, blah, blah, blah. But is there an opportunity here? Well, no, really not, because I don't see a pattern or an oversold condition. You know, a pattern would be like a, a falling wedge, a small falling wedge or a flag. Here we had a very steep kind of flag wedge thingy, and we were oversold. 
So that's my setup. And I don't have that set up right now. But I'm going to use these indicators on these charts coming up. And this is Google. And this first group is representing the communication services sector, XLC. And Google is the biggest component in that sector. And it's also the fourth biggest component in the S&P 500. So one thing I'm noticing is we've got some correlation breakdown, so to speak, uh, in some sectors and groups. And what do I mean by that? Well, you saw that chart with Google, and it's near a new high. It's pulling back off that new high. Well, here's Facebook, and it's part of this sector as well. And it formed a lower high there from August to November and another lower high in January. And it's basically, it's got a bit of a downtrend going here. You know, maybe it's wedgy. Uh, and this is a huge move. So this looks like a corrective move to me. But I see that, you know, we're toying with the 200-day. The full stochastic turned bearish with that move below 40. So, and it's really underperforming. I mean, it has underperformed since September. So I would keep that off of my radar and it is weighing on the communication services sector. Then we look at Netflix, and it has gone nowhere. Here's the high in July. Well, it is below that high. It looked like it had a breakout, and maybe it does have a breakout. And you can see this pullback here. So it's consolidating after the breakout, but we need to get a new breakout. We need to get a break back above this high here from late February to get this uptrend going again. So that would help XLC. And then we got the two telecom players in XLC. We've got Verizon, and yeah, I don't know what to make of this, heads or tails. You know, the chart was looking good with this breakout, and then it's back below the 200-day, and you can see that the full stochastic is bearish since January, so that is no good. And then I look at telephone, AT&T. Uh, this is just a flat chart. There's no uptrend. You know, maybe there's a surge and a consolidation. But, you know, this is a flat trend for a year. So there are other charts out there that have better setups or trends. Now, at TrendInvestorPro.com, I deal mostly with ETFs. And it's important with ETFs that you understand the main drivers for these ETFs, and especially the sectors and the ones that are weighted by market cap. And if you go to the SSGA website, you can see the holdings for the sectors because I'm going to do energy next. But look at that. The two top stocks in XLE account for like 45% of the ETF. That's just a crazy weighting. Everything else is pretty much just, yeah, it's, it, these are the two main drivers and if you want to get XLE going, you got to make sure ExxonMobil and Chevron are going. So let's look at those two stocks. So here is ExxonMobil. And I know everybody is just gaga over energy right now, but I look at it as really way extended. And I don't see a setup here. Uh, we can see that there is the Stoke close turning bullish and price staying above the 200-day there in December. So that's when we're looking for pullbacks within the uptrend. And, you know, maybe we had a little consolidation here, and then we had a definite pullback there that was playable. But right now we're quite extended, and I would just be waiting for the next playable pullback. If we look at CVX Chevron, we can see a similar pattern. It turned bullish there in late November with Stoke close moving above 40. I say Stoke close, full stochastic, and you got above the 200-day. And then we see RSI oversold in late December and a pullback to the 200-day, a test of that again in early February, and RSI in the oversold zone. But right now we've got another moonshot in progress, so I'm just going to wait for the next setup. So here's a look at the main analysis page at TrendInvestorPro.com. I'm talking about the pullback in IBB, which is continuing because we never know how pullbacks are going to play out. Some are short and sweet, 
and some are a little more extended than we like. I do a video every weekend covering every ETF in our all-weather ETF list, as well as broad market conditions. Then I've got a timing model report that I do on Fridays. And then Thursdays is the big ETF trends, patterns, and setups report. And that will be coming out tomorrow for subscribers. And I tested the sector breadth models. And I found out that the breadth models for sectors didn't work as good. The breadth models for the major indexes work and add value. But I think a simple trend following technique works better for the sectors. And that is also available for subscribers. So check out trendinvestorpro.com if you're interested. So I've got a list here I'm working off of uh, 30 stocks, the 30 biggest stocks in the S&P 500. Uh, two of them are from energy, as you just saw. Only three are from the finance sector. And if you look here, you can see Berkshire. And there is the full stochastic turning bullish in early August and getting above the 200-day. And, you know, you don't have to worry about chasing a rally because there will be a pullback at some point. And this is a pretty nice one, a test of the 200-day and a little bounce and then a breakout. And then we had another little pullback here, RSI in the oversold zone, another little pullback there, RSI in the oversold zone. But right now it's just in the trend monitoring phase here as it hits a new high. We see J.P. Morgan doing the same thing. You know, it's turning bullish there in October and then breaking out in early November and just continuing higher. And the same with Bank of America. So these three are driving the finance SBDR XLF. Now, the next 10 stocks come from the technology sector. So 10 of the top 30 stocks in the S&P 500 are in the technology sector. And it accounts for like 27% of the ETF. And so I put these in a perf chart first so we can see performance. But this is why technology is struggling. You can see Apple's down around 5% year to date. Adobe, 6%. Salesforce, 4% and Visa 1%. And then we look at the gains. MasterCard's up a little bit. Microsoft's up a little bit. PayPal's up big. And then the three semiconductors are up pretty good. So semiconductors are up. This would be the electronic payments group, these three. And then these three are software. So IGV is a software ETF. iPay is the electronic payments ETF. And of course, SOX is the semiconductor ETF. Now, when I look at MasterCard and Visa, I'm just going to single out these two. I see a really interesting pattern developing here. It could be a big inverse head and shoulders, uh, but I'm more of the consolidation. It's kind of a big consolidation within an uptrend. So there's a new high consolidating and breaking out. And it is starting to lead these other technology ETFs over the last five weeks here. And then if we look at Visa, we can see a similar pattern. These are very related stocks, by the way. You can see a kind of consolidation. That high was broken, actually. Uh, but, you know, it's a move to a new high, a consolidation, and it looks like it's ready to break out and move higher. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link below in the description. Again, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Stock Charts. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you hey, again Grayson next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with week. Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.